at first, scientists thought it was a comet. But it had no tail. And so it couldn't be a comet, and people concluded it must be an asteroid. Now known as Oumuamua, it had hurtled down from above the solar system, narrowly missing the sun, coming within the orbit of Mercury, and now was whizzing past the Earth just 30 million kilometers away. Astronomers believe it is made of rock, but might it be made instead of dark matter? When we look out at galaxies much like our own Milky Way, they look, many of them look something like this spiral galaxy, M81. If you went to an amusement park and were about to get on one of those fun rides where, where a swing goes, goes, uh, goes whizzing around a central pillar and you're held on by nice strong chains, if you got up to the ride and noticed that instead of chains it was held together by dental floss, you probably wouldn't want to get on that ride. You'd be too worried that those, that dental floss would break, allowing you to go hurtling out into space and crash to the ground. And yet when we look at spiral galaxies like this one, we see that they are spinning far too fast to be held together by the gravity of the stars and gas and dust that must be providing gravity. Well, there's two possibilities. One is that we don't understand the laws of gravity properly that we need to change general relativity, Einstein's theory of, of how gravity works, his improvement on Newton's work. That in fact, the laws of gravity on these very large scales aren't quite the same as they are within the solar system or on Earth, but subtly different. That's possible, but we have so far failed to change those laws of gravity in a way that hangs together. And so the other possibility is that there's a lot of missing matter inside this galaxy and inside of every galaxy we see. We call that missing matter dark matter because we can't see it. Now, for a long time, we've thought that that missing matter must be particles, tiny particles that are whizzing through space, that are filling this room. And the only reason we don't feel them is that they are so weakly interacting that they manage to pass through the Earth. We have particles like that that we know about called neutrinos. They come from the center of the sun, go unimpeded through the sun. Most of them go unimpeded through the earth, and they can travel through light years of ordinary material. And it's only by allowing many, many of them to pass through the detectors we build that we've ever been able to see them. So we've thought for a long time that dark matter must be like that. And so we've built detectors like the one on the left. And we put them deep underground in old mines or underneath dams where cosmic rays can't get to them. And we've waited for, for dark matter particles to hit the nuclei or the electrons of these dark matter detectors and heat them up just a tiny little bit because they're incredibly sensitive thermometers or make a very tiny sound because they're in incredibly sensitive microphones. And so far, after 40 years, we've failed to register anything in these dark matter detectors. We've also built enormous machines called, in this particular one, called the Large Hadron Collider at, the, at, at CERN in Geneva, hoping to make particles of dark matter. Well, we've made lots of things at the Large Hadron Collider. In particular, we've discovered the Higgs boson, the last unknown particle, undiscovered particle of the standard model. But so far, we haven't made any dark matter. Well, could it be that our idea of what dark matter is is just wrong? That it's not little particles whizzing through space, but large chunks of matter, like this one. This is an artist's conception of a neutron star. Now, it's not a very good, uh, good picture, because I'm not much of an artist. I'm, I'm a physicist. But what is, a, what is it about a neutron star that makes it good dark matter? Or what is it about pieces of pieces of neutron stars, smaller neutron stars, chunks of nuclear matter, much like the nuclei at the center of atoms, but bigger, that would make them good dark matter. After all, didn't I tell you that dark matter had to be dark, that you couldn't see it? And we can see neutron stars. We can see nuclei. But actually, neutron stars and things like it, chunks of nuclear matter, make wonderful dark matter. Because although you can see the, nuclei, the matter at the surface, you don't get to see the inside. So in fact, most of, the, most of the matter is invisible. The other thing is, unlike particles, which are very, have very little mass, and so there have to be lots and lots and lots of them, a neutron star is really big. If the neutron star was the dark matter, we would only need one of them in every 1,000 cubic light years. 
And so there's not much chance of it hitting our detector or even passing through the solar system very often. Now, if they were smaller chunks of nuclear matter, chunks of neutron star, they would pass through more often, and we might have a hope of seeing them. We would want really big detectors, things that are so large that it was pretty much inevitable that dark matter would hit one of them. Well, here are two really good big detectors. The first one is the planet we live on, the planet Earth, and the other is the moon. And they're nice and close to us, and so we can imagine putting, putting instruments on them to use them as dark matter detectors. Well, what would it look like if dark matter hit the Earth? It depends where it hits. And so we can use the different places that it could hit as different ways of looking for dark matter. For example, dark matter streaking through the atmosphere would heat up, and it would heat the atmosphere around it. And it might glow just like a meteor. Now, you might say, well, are the meteors we're seeing dark matter? The thing is, meteors from the solar system move relatively slowly, only 20 kilometers a second or 30 kilometers a second, whereas dark matter might be moving 300 or 400 kilometers a second, so we could tell whether a meteor was made of dark matter. But probably, if, if we were having enough of these to detect, they would be much smaller chunks, and they wouldn't glow as brightly as a meteor. So we would have to use very large detectors that look for things like meteors. They're called cosmic ray detectors, ultra-high cosmic ray detectors. And we build huge ones. We have one down in southern Argentina that's tens of thousands of square kilometers staring out into space looking for ultra-high energy cosmic rays that can also look for these chunks of matter as dark matter. We're planning to build one that looks down from space at a huge fraction of the Earth's surface, at, of the atmosphere, and we can watch for those cosmic rays or for these chunks of dark matter running through the atmosphere incredibly quickly, much faster than any, uh, than any meteor, but much slower than any, any typical cosmic ray, and we can look for the glow of dark matter passing through the atmosphere. We also see craters, for example, on the moon. The moon is a wonderful detector of things that hit it because they leave behind craters. Now, the different thing about dark matter is if a chunk of dark matter hit the moon, it would be, moving, it would be so dense and moving so fast that not only would go into the moon, it would come out the other side. Not too many things do that. Imagine having a, a piece of jello and sending a really, really fast, tiny little BB through the jello. What would happen? As you went in, you'd make a little tiny hole. But as you went out, you'd make a big splat. We can imagine looking on the moon and on Mercury and on other bodies for, to see, are there any splats like that? Are there any distinctive craters that look like they came from the inside rather than the outside? Now. There are other more mundane, you know, everyday ways that we can look for dark matter. For example, you might want to go home and look at your windows. Because as a little chunk of dark matter passed through your window, it would melt a very, very tiny cylinder through your window, a little tiny track. And so if we got all of you to go home and look at the windows in your homes and in your offices and in your friends' offices and their homes, we might be able to, by looking at these vast expanses of windows that fill our cities, be able to tell whether particles of dark matter had come hurtling through them, leaving behind these little tracks. What about Oumuamua? Well, it may or may not be a chunk of dark matter. It's going to be very hard for us to tell unless we take a trip there. And people are planning to send a mission, if they can, to Oumuamua and try to catch it. But whether or not Oumuamua is a chunk of dark matter, there's a very good chance that our galaxy is being held together by stuff that we simply cannot see so far, and that is out there for us to discover, and we hope to do that soon. Thank you.